Hello again. This video is going to be about using the ICOM 9700 as a standalone device to automatically receive slow scan television images sent down by the International Space Station. I'm going to be testing the ICOM 9700 in this use case during the event from the 4th of October to the 8th of October 2020, but they've already started transmitting as of the 3rd of October. Well, I suppose in UTC, it is the 4th now, but they've been transmitting almost all day. So, in order to do this, we're going to need to know about two functions of the ICOM 9700, the record function and the squelch function. The record function is relatively straightforward. You hit the menu button below the screen here and you go to record. Provided you have an SD card in here, all you have to do at this point is then press the record button. And you can see that I'm actually already recording, so I'll stop it, and then I'll start it again. And we'll then go back out to the main menu. But you might notice something is now missing. The little red icon in the upper right hand corner is not active, meaning that we're not actually recording audio on our A band here. And that's because I have the squelch set such that no audio is coming through. So the next important setting we need to know about is the squelch. Now on the ICOM 9700, the squelch knob is behind the audio gain knob. And if you turn the knob all the way to the left, you start controlling the RF gain. So you can see I've turned the RF gain to zero and on our spectrum scope and our waterfall, the signal has practically gone away. As I rotate this knob to the right, the signal will come back in the waterfall, and eventually we hit a point where that orange RF gain indicator disappears. Now the squelch is completely open and the RF gain is at max. As I turn this knob a little bit more to the right, you'll see that green LED which is indicating that we are receiving stuff and you should also be able to hear some audio there. If I turn the audio gain up, that will go away. But there's no indicator on the S meter telling us what our squelch level is. That's because we're in a squelch mode called noise squelch, where the radio tries to determine if there is noise or if there's modulated audio in the received waveform after it's demodulated from FM into audio. As we turn this further, it appears to enter a hybrid squelch mode, where that same rule about the modulated audio being received having to not just be noise and the signal has to be greater than our marker on the S meter, because otherwise our signal strength right now is like an S5 and our markers at an S3, so it should be open and we should hear audio, but instead we hear nothing. So because we can set the squelch here to be listening for noise as opposed to an actual signal strength level, this should allow us to let the radio try and determine when slow scan television is being sent, even if the signal is exceedingly weak uh, compared to our noise floor. And we should be able to see further into the gray when the image starts to get all fuzzy, as opposed to just having a traditional squelch on this. So we'll go back to the point where it's open, and we'll set it at the noise squelch function. Now you can see we're not recording, and it's waiting to hear something. So I've got the 9700 here connected via a 100-foot run of LMR 400 coax up to my M2 sat pack VHF egg beater. So that's the egg beater that's meant for the 2-meter ham band at 144 megahertz. And then we tune to the ISS center downlink frequency for SSTV, which is 145.8 megahertz. And I'll just leave this here for a week, and we'll see what it picks up in the audio, and then I'll try and demodulate that on my phone or on a computer, and I'll show you guys the results. So that'll be, that'll be it. All right, so we've time-traveled about two weeks into the future here, and I've got quite a number of recordings that I pulled off the SD card from the 9700, and a lot of these WAV files that were made uh, were not decodable. They were either too weak or they were actually noise where the squelch opened up on something that wasn't the intended ISS SSTV downlink. One of the causes of that I noticed while just sitting at my desk was if a satellite, say one of the linear birds, goes over that has a downlink near the ISS SSTV downlink frequency of 145.8 megahertz, it tends to open up the squelch if somebody's transmitting and sideband is being repeated back down off of one of those linear transponders. And then any other local noise source will oftentimes open that up. Uh, one weird thing I did notice, I think there is one recording in here that is like 40 minutes long of just some kind of noise source. So I've included all these audio files in a Google Drive folder link, which will be down in the description if you'd like to peruse through them. But I went through and I took the ones that were about the right length to be an image and uh, the ones that actually did contain PD-120 uh, audio to be demodulated and I excerpted them all into Audacity here, and then to decode them, I would just go through and pick one that I wanted to code, and then I'd hit the solo button, and pipe it through a VB virtual audio cable into MMSSTV, which is pretty much the Windows standard program for decoding these kinds of things. And just a note about the settings I used to decode this, it's all pretty much standard 
I like to use the uh, PLL demodulation method. You can use the Hilbert transform or the zero crossing, but I've just found that the phase lock loop method tends to get the slant adjustment correct for me with the ISS SSTV, so I haven't really played with it much beyond that. So after I demodulated a bunch of these images, and uh, you can see I got some of them in the history there, I combined the ones that came off the egg beater all into a collage. I'll show you that right now. So here's the collage of the images that were downlinked using the 9700 and the egg beater antenna setup. You notice that I only have eight images here that I was really able to decode successfully, and none of them are perfect quality. This is a combination of the limitations of my setup based on the antenna that I'm using, and the uh, passes that were actually available to me, or rather the times when the International Space Station was transmitting that were available to me. Now, you usually get about two reasonably high inclination International Space Station passes every day, uh, that being like 30 degrees or above that could really be used by this antenna. And you would think, okay, so I get two perfect opportunities to be able to receive an image every day. In reality, the International Space Station does like a two minutes on, three minutes off kind of duty cycle thing where they don't want to run the transmitter all the time. And so you might get a nice high pass, but they transmit at the start and the end, and basically you get nothing. Uh, now the egg beater antennas are great in that they have circuit polarization and they null out noise sources that are at low elevation angles as compared to things coming from higher elevation angles. And so they make working uh, linear transponder satellites, cheap CubeSats that are tumbling around uh, without having a rotator at high elevation angles pretty easy. But for this, they really show their limitations in how many passes I was able to use and uh, what the quality was like when I was able to get a pass where, you know, it's not like going outside and putting, pointing a directional antenna at it. So usually when I participate in these events, I go outside with a log periodic or a uh, Yagi antenna, and I point right at the International Space Station. I've actually got some uh, reasonably interesting footage here where I had my cell phone and the camera mount and a very nice uh, visible ISS pass. And you can see uh, the moving dot, the bright one, is the International Space Station. The brighter dot is Jupiter, and the uh, not as bright dot is Saturn, all in uh, one of the frames there. Now there's a lot of advantages to going outside with a directional antenna. You get to null out all of the noise sources from other directions around you, pending them not being in your side lobes, if your side lobes are that substantial. With the International Space Station, which happens to be spin stabilized with a linearly polarized antenna, if I recall correctly, you can align the polarization so you're not taking a 3 dB penalty for going to circular, and you're not taking even more than that for being off more substantially in linear polarization. And then on top of all of that, you just get the gain that the antenna has in that direction. That usually gets you nice, crisp, clear, and complete images. And I think it's a lot more rewarding to go outside, be able to point at that dot, say that dot is sending down radio, and that radio is making sound, which turns into this image. So in summary, we've shown that it is possible to use the 9700 to automate this process, but you probably will get better results if you go outside and do it the old-fashioned way with a directional antenna. If you like this, make sure to hit that button, and uh, consider subscribing if you'd like to see more.